Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I have, um, I want to talk to you about a, a very, well, a recent fascination for me in terms of perfume families, genres. This is one of my favourite books on perfume. It's uh, by Neil Chapman, whose uh, blog is called The Black Narcissus. Uh, I really enjoy coming back to this book. Um, I treat it a little bit like a reference book, um, just if I want to be a little bit inspired. And this video today is inspired by this book because one of the things that I really like about the way this is laid out, you can't really see that here, is basically um, Neil Chapman's um, made chapters for specific uh, perfume families. Um, the, the first one that you come to in this book is green perfumes. Now, even though green seems like quite a definitive descriptor for a perfume, I, I think I think that it would still be quite subjective to what smells green to the individual. And I guess I'm going to talk about some of my favorite green, green perfumes today in this video. Uh, but it's quite possible that some of you have smelled these perfumes and don't consider them to be green perfumes. And I'm obviously going to leave a lot of um, well-known perfumes out of this because, like I said, I'm... I'm only just starting really to explore this genre or family of perfume. So what I want to do is kind of start off by mentioning a few that I actually don't own or have tried at some point, but but kind of left a, a lasting impression uh, on me. The, the first one I want to talk about, uh, and I, I haven't worn this enough, but I remember getting a, a sample of this. Uh, probably a couple of years ago and really enjoying it, particularly in the summer months. Um, and this is from Chanel's Les Exclusives line. This is Bel Respiro. This is a, gr um, the greenness comes from a grass note or a chord. It's mixed in with beautiful, delicate Chanel florals. Um, I don't remember, um, remember smelling much of this but when i was looking at the at the note pyramid for this perfume there apparently it was or is supposed to be um a, a base lever accord it must be very very soft i don't remember it um being very prominent when i smelled it um this is a beautiful green summery perfume but um it must be said I, it really didn't last very long on my skin um, and so it's kind of one of the reasons why I've sort of held off on, you know, contemplating a bottle of Belle Respiro. That's from Chanel. Another one that I had uh, about a five mil decan, maybe even only a few mil, um, that I have been kind of on the lookout for because it's not very easy to find to buy here uh, is the original Jean-Louis Chéret. Um, I had a I had a decant of the EDP, um, but the EDT seems to be more readily available online. And I have been told that they're reasonably similar. Galbanum oak moss. Um, what I remember it, what I remember of it, because it's been a while um, smelling it was. The, the fact that it was actually, I found it quite sharp, but in, in a very um, assertive, strong um, sense, it, like it really meant, meant business. It was that kind of scent on my skin anyway. Um, it doesn't get talked about a lot, but um, I think uh, I, I know a few um, noses that I, I quite respect um, their taste like it and think it's a great perfume as well. So that's Jean-Louis Chéret. Um, the third one, which I owned for a little while, um, unfortunately became, it, you know, was fell victim to my decluttering process. Um, this one was from uh, Frédéric Mal, a French lover. I enjoyed French lover. I found myself not wearing it as much and it kind of sort of got caught up in the me getting rid of bottles. I don't I, I don't necessarily miss it, but I do still think it's one of the best green scents um, I've smelled. Now, 
In this case, the, the greenness, um, there is galbanum uh, in, in the perfume itself. But for me, what I really loved about French Lover was the angelica note. It's got one of the nicest angelica notes that I've smelled in perfume. And it's a note I really have started to enjoy recently. So that's, there's French Lover. So um, probably one of the more expensive ones on, on this list. Um, moving on to some that I actually own now. Uh, this one here. I'm just going to reach over and grab 1962 by Floris, Floris London. Uh, I can see, I think of this as, as a green perfume. Um, a lot of people might classify it as an aromatic woody. Um, the thing is, I the green that I get from here is, uh, as opposed to the some, some of them that I've mentioned already, there's no kind of grassy notes. There's not really a, a strong galbanum note that I can detect. Where the green comes from here is um, cypress and uh, a really lovely sweet basil note. Um, so I've mentioned this before. I'm just going to spray some on. I've mentioned this before that this really has, it's really interesting. If you wear this in the winter, I, I get this kind of, always get a sense of being outdoors with this, with this scent. In the winter, I am, you know, images are conjured up of alpine forests, um, high in the canopies of those trees. And then in the warmer weather, because of that basil note coming through, it's more of a Mediterranean landscape kind of feel. So, but to me, it is it is something that I consider, I, I think of as a green perfume. And I'm gonna talk about one also that I don't currently own. I did have one, uh, I did have a 10 mil decant of this at some point and I eventually finished it. And a lot of people might be surprised that I'm including this as a green perfume and this is actually from the house of Zerzhov, one of the very very few Zerzhov that I would be tempted to buy if it, if I could find a discounted one. This is Zerzhov Neo. Now this is a bright citrusy summer perfume. The, the citrus mainly comes from the the Neroli note um, and Coupled with that is is some really high pitched bright green notes, and I think even though I'm pretty sure it's not listed in the official pyramid, that a lot of that is coming from Petit Grain, which is essentially the the Nerol, From what I understand, it's the Neroli, including the green stems, and it really gives that kind of green citrusy woody feel to it. Um, and I consider Neo to be basically a citrus green perfume, perfect for summer, has an excellent performance for what it is. Um, but I, I think it just smells on point and I love that. I love that green, that green tinge. It runs all the way through it. One of my favorite, um, perfumes really. And the only reason I don't own a full bottle is because I'm still working my way through this travel spray. Um, this is Ormond Woman by Ormond Jane. Now, uh, this also has a grass note accord. Um, there, there is also a hemlock note here. Now, I read that it was hemlock fir, which is um, apparently different. Well, it's a different thing to hemlock, which poisons people. But uh, whatever it is, it's giving off this lovely, um, in combination with this grass note, what I like about Ormond, Ormond Woman is that the that greenness is so beautifully blended with uh, like a floral heart, and then it has, and then it has out of all of the ones I'm talking about today, this lovely creamy light amber base that come that comes through, and I definitely get this creamy greenness from Ormond Woman. Um, I'm not sure if everyone gets the same. Thing, but this is that's what sets it apart from me. It's very, it's a very diffusive green scent. Um, it has a little bit of heft when it's on your skin as well, and it's so so pretty. Um, that's Ormond Woman. And the last one um, I'm going to talk about in this video, and 
you almost, I don't think, could do a video like this without including um, this perfume, which also happens to be my very latest acquisition. Um, number 19, Eau de Toilette by Chanel. Um, this is a, a fairly current bottle. I think it's from 2017, according to the batch code. But this, this is my current obsession, to be honest. And I'm late to the number 19 phenomenon. I haven't come here with any preconceptions about what number 19 uh, stands for, what it represents. I know, I know the story of its creation. It was created for, um, for Coco Chanel, for uh, her own personal use, then later released on the market. And again, um, yes, there is galbanum here. There is a beautiful um, grassy note. What this reminds, I can't help but think about number 19, um, especially the EDT, okay? Because the EDT on my skin doesn't come off as floral as the EDP, um, which, is why I which is why I chose this. I can smell that really refined, smooth, silky iris note in the background. Um, it, it's 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 masterfully blended, I, I have to say. But what it reminds me of is it number nineteen for me is an amalgamation of all those memories of being lying in your favorite park on on the bare grass looking up um, at, at the clouds, at warm breeze. It, it almost starts off like the, the, the frost on the blade of grass that's you know slowly melting away by the warm air as, as the day progresses. I know I'm very much romanticizing it, but this is the effect this smell has on my, on my skin as well. And I just love it. And, and, I, and I'm so happy that I smelled this Without any, without any of the folklore around what Chanel Number no. Nineteen, what it represents, what kind of woman or man would wear Number no. Nineteen. Number for me, it's it's that. For me, it's a it's nothing but a beautiful um, imagined memory, a moment in time, um, like a, a melding of all of that. It's just it's pure bliss and happiness on my skin and ultimate green scent for me um if i had to get rid of all the ones or didn't own any of the ones um this would be the one the one that i'd keep um so number 19 that's my rant and my ramblings on green perfumes i would obviously love to hear what you guys love in the green genre um and it'd be interesting to see if you consider some perfumes green like i i, I know um you know some ob obvious ones like um green irish tweed um and there are some notes that people might consider green like vetiver and even patchouli that i never think about as as green notes either i think of them in a kind of more earthy sort of um characteristic anyway i'll stop talking because i'm losing my voice um and i'll see you guys all next time Bye for now.